In Jewish folklore and popular belief, an evil spirit which enters into a living person, cleaves to his soul, causes mental illness, talks through his mouth, and represents a separate and alien personality, is called a dibuk. The term appears neither in Talmudic literature nor in the Kabbalah, where this phenomenon is always called evil spirit. The term was introduced into literature only in the 17th century from the spoken language of German and Polish Jews. It is an abbreviation of Dibek Me Rua or Dibek Min Ha Hizonim, which is found in man. The act of attachment of the spirit to the body became the name of the spirit itself. However, the verb Davuk is found throughout Kabbalistic literature, where it denotes the relations between the evil spirit and the body. Stories about Dibikim are common in the time of the Second Temple and the Talmudic periods, particularly in the Gospels. They are not as prominent in medieval literature. At first, the Dibik was considered to be a devil or a demon which entered the body of a sick person. Later, an explanation common among other peoples was added, namely that some of the Dibikim are the spirits of dead persons who were not laid to rest and thus became demons. This idea, also common in medieval mystery, Christianity, combined with the doctrine of Gilgal in the 16th century and became widespread and accepted by large segments of the Jewish population together with the belief in Dibikim. They were generally considered to be souls, which, on account of the enormity of their sins, were not even allowed to transmigrate, and as denuded spirits, they sought refuge in the bodies of living persons. The entry of a dipic into a person was a sign of his having committed a secret sin, which opened a door for the dipic. A combination of beliefs current in the non-Jewish environment and popular Jewish beliefs influenced by the Kabbalah form these conceptions. The Kabbalistic literature of Luria's disciples contains many stories and protocols about the exorcism of dipicim. Numerous manuscripts present detailed instructions on how to exercise them. The power to exercise Dibikim was given to Ba'alei Shem, or accomplished Hadissim, Hasidim. They exercised the Dibuk from the body which was bound by it and simultaneously redeemed the soul by providing a tikkun for him, either by transmigration or by causing the Dibuk to enter hell. Moses Cordovero defined the Dibuk as an evil pregnancy. From 1560, several detailed reports in Hebrew and Yiddish on the deeds of Dibikim and their testimonies about themselves were preserved and published. A wealth of material on actual stories of Dibikim is gathered in Samuel, in Hayim, in Nishmat, Hayim, in Minhat, Elihu, and in Minhat, Yeruha. The latter exercised Shabbatai Zevi and his prophet Nathan of Gaza, who appeared as Dibikim in the bodies of men and women in Baghdad in 1903. Special booklets on the exorcisms of famous spirits which took place in courts have also been published in Nicholsburg, in Detmold, and in Solowitz. The last protocol of this kind published in Jerusalem in 1904 concerns a dibic which entered the body of a woman and was exercised by Ben Zion Hazen. The phenomena connected with the beliefs in and the stories about Dibikim usually have their factual background in cases of hysteria and sometimes even in manifestations of schizophrenia.